Hey folks, uh, today I'm going to try to attempt to answer a question um, that someone asked me. Actually, somebody asked me to do a video on this, and um, so I thought that uh, I would oblige and, and try to give you a, a good summary of information. The question uh, is, um, how do you find a good luthier or guitar tech to work on your instrument? Um, it's tricky. Uh, first of all, nothing beats word of mouth. Nothing beats word of mouth. So, uh, you know, even in the day of the internet, um, good luthiers who do good work, usually uh, their deeds spread across the guitar community. So somebody, you might meet someone or play with someone and they'll say, yeah, I, I, this guy takes care of my guitars. He does great work. When you live in an area for a certain amount of time and you talk to enough people, you kind of get a semblance of um, good luthiers in, in your area. Who specializes on what? That's the second thing. Some luthiers specialize just in guitar setups. Some on restoration. Some on certain types of guitars. For instance, um, you know, you might have a guy that takes care of your acoustic guitars and does woodwork and all that, but you might have another guy that does your electric guitar who's better at wiring and wiring diagrams and things like that. Every self-respecting luthier or shop should have a good website with, um, you know, a lot of information about the work they do, the kind of jobs they do, and the prices that they charge. I suppose if you have some of the smaller um, companies where it's just a guy doing repairs in his garage, he may not even have uh, he may not even have a website, so you, you're kind of stuck with word and mouth, of mouth there. Uh, but I think the, in this day and age, if you're a self-respecting business person, you have at least a business card website. Where people can look look up what you do. And there's some sort of information on your work and your prices. There really isn't any, any excuse, even for really small businesses, um, to do that. Uh, make sure that the person also does repair work. I mean, I don't do general repair. I have people asking me, and every once in a while I do it for folks. Um, you know, people that I know or, or customers that have given me a lot of business. But generally, I work on instruments for sale. So, um, you know, I'm not a, a full repair shop. I'm not doing sort of neck resets on old Martins um, all day. Uh, you know, there are a lot of luthiers on, on YouTube that do that sort of stuff, and, and their YouTube channel is all about filming the repair work they're doing for clients. Um, that's the kind of people you want. Um, you know, I choose to specialize in uh, getting a lot of instruments in stock and then uh, making them better or making them fit for uh, resale, finding homes for them. That's sort of become my niche. I have other jobs, so I don't, um, I'm not a full-time uh, um, luthier, uh, as a lot of people are uh, that we know in this community. Um, I would, if I had a nice acoustic guitar or a classical guitar, I would find a full repair service repair shop rather than take it to a guitar center or a, um, you know, one of those uh, big um, retail shops full of guitars. Not to say that there aren't decent guitar techs, but usually those shops like Guitar Center don't have like uh, a fully trained uh, luthier who can do, you know, uh, all manner of repair. Normally in those guitar shops, if you're lucky, you'll find someone who is adequately trained to do uh, guitar setups and do simple uh, fixes. Um, I mean, th that's a skill, and there are a lot of really good guitar techs out there, but they're not really full uh, luthiers. I mean, technically a luthier is someone who uh, makes instruments and does full restorations and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, some people use different terminology, but, in, you know, if you go to a guitar center, you might find somebody who's does really good work uh, regarding setups and tweaks, 
but uh, if you take a, a guitar that needs a neck reset in there or it needs refretting, they're not going to be able to do that or they're not going to do a good job of it. So, and, and, you know, um, if you've got your vintage guitar, you probably don't want to take it to one of those places. Um, so find a full, um, full service uh, repair shop for guitars. Occasionally you'll find violin luthiers. There's one in my town that does guitars as well. You do get some crossover stuff. Uh, it usually works this way. People who are trained in bowed strings sometimes uh, cross over into the fretted string world and do an adequate job. Um, but you don't see it too often the other way. You don't see people who are trained in fretted strings being able to do you know, a violin restoration. It's a slightly different science. Um, you know, I'd be wary of that because, you know, these these schools that people go to to become luthiers like Red Wing or the Chicago School, um, they have two sides of the, the school. One is for bowed strings and one is for fretted strings. And, um, you know, people some people can cross over, but only to a certain extent. Um, so if you have a vintage, let's say a vintage Martin or a Gibson or, or something like that, I'd find a guitar guy to work on it. Uh, your violin luthier will probably be able to cut you a new nut. Will probably be able to do uh, any woodworking uh, stuff on your guitar. But when it comes to uh, fret work and things like that, um, you know they they may not want to for for the first thing, but they may not be able to do uh, as good of a job. So first of all, find somebody who specializes in what you need done. I think is the first uh, rule of thumb. Uh, secondly, um, always ask questions when you take your, your guitar to someone. Uh, get a diagnosis of your guitar. Uh, uh, if they're not sure, then obviously you might not, not want to leave your guitar there for work. I mean, go, go and get a second opinion. It's just, it's just like, you know... Um, <laughs> diagnosis for human ailments you know you want to be sure before you allow someone to operate on you what's the same with your expensive guitar if it's a hundred dollar guitar uh, there's quite not quite the same anxiety but if it's a, a very expensive guitar you want somebody who knows exactly what they're doing they know what's wrong with it and they know how to fix it uh, to work on it so make sure that you ask a lot of questions have the guitar in front of you uh, while they're explaining you know, uh, what's wrong with it. Maybe they have it on their bench and they can show you what they're going to do. Uh, that's always more ideal than dealing with a situation over the phone where they're trying to explain over the phone. Uh, but I realize in the middle of, well, hopefully coming towards the end of COVID, a face-to-face -face meeting may not be a hundred percent possible and you may have to send your guitar somewhere. Uh, in which case I would go on the website and read some of the testimonials, um, you know, try to find out who else has got work done there. Uh, um, you know, I mean, it's, you, you'd like to think people that have been established for a while, that's another thing, is the shop, has it been around? How long have they been in business? If they've been in business 20, 30, 40 years, chances are they do good work. Um, you know, the, the universe has a way of sorting out from the good from the bad, particularly in this in this field. If you've got someone doing really bad guitar restorations and big um, guitar repairs, normally time finds them out. Uh, and people stop going to them or the word gets out that this person doesn't do good work. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've seen the opposite in the retail stores. I've seen retail stores survive with with barely adequate guitar techs just doing setups and stuff and getting away with it because most of the clientele are novices or, or um, you know, parents with kids and they don't know anything about uh, how a guitar works. And so, you know, somebody who works in those places might get away with doing barely adequate setups for uh, any manner of time. But when it comes to really serious um, luthier work, uh, restoration work, they get found out. Uh, and um, you, normally if people have been around for a while, they're established for a good reason. They do uh, good work and the word gets out and people take their vintage guitars to them. So I realize that this is all very 
you know, just common sense stuff. And it's probably stuff you already know. But hopefully there's something helpful in um, what I'm saying. When it comes to electric guitars, uh, there are certain uh, guitar techs or luthiers that uh, will, will tell you. I mean, for instance, if, you, if you've been watching the Ted Woodford videos, I mean, he says all the time, I can do wiring, but it's not my speciality. I'm a wood guy. And you can tell he's much more um, at home working on, you know, old Martins and Taylors and things like that, rather than rewiring someone's Ibanez, you know. So normally guys will be upfront about it, you know, and that, but, but then you'll find experts that can rewire anything that are, you know, gurus with any uh, rewiring diagram. Um, you know, they can figure it out and put it together. That's the kind of person you want. Let's say if you're, um, you know, putting in some sophisticated electronics uh, into your guitar or you want to, um, you know, emulate some vintage wiring uh, diagram, you find those guys. Those, you know, they're, maybe they're no good at woodwork, but they do excellent electronic work. Um, so it's a matter of finding out uh, people's speciality and finding somebody who does the kind of work that you need done. Uh, if not, make sure that you go to a full service repair shop, not some guitar store where they have some kid in the back that knows how to uh, do basic setup. For you know real serious re repair and restoration, you want to go to a full service shop. You might have to drive to the next town um, for instance, where I am, you know, probably for the, the top shops, it's half hour, 45 uh, minute drive. Um, or you might find somebody really, really good in the next state that you, you've, you found out does excellent work through other people. And it's worth the risk to ship your guitar to them. I know a lot of the guys that do, uh, re uh repair work on YouTube, like Randy and, and Dave up in Canada. Um, you know, they receive guitars in the mail, they fix them and send them back. And they obviously do, do good work because they're, you know, still receiving jobs and people flock to their channels and, and speak well of them. So you may be in a position if you live in a remote area and that's, you know, probably more, um, uh, that's probably more accurate with the U S and, uh, the Australian places like that, which are larger countries than it would be, say, in the UK, where you could probably find somewhere to drive to or take a train to uh, with your guitar. Um, yeah, but do the research, check the website. Uh, if you can, meet them in person, ask lots of questions, have them demonstrate in front of you what the issues are. Try to learn about your instrument while you're there. It's fascinating. These things are fascinating. And you perhaps you can learn how to care for it better, even do some simple repairs uh, for yourself. Um, it's intimidating at first, but if you uh, get the tut tutorage from, you know, a really competent luthier, it gives you the confidence uh, to take on, to tackle some things for yourself. And then you're not taking your guitar in for absolutely everything. You're just taking it in for the uh, serious uh, stuff. Uh, also, prices, check around. Uh, there are some people, um, there is a, a general practice of shop prices uh, in the, in the, um, repair community, but it does fluctuate a little bit. And every once in a while you meet people with exorbitant prices. So if it feels or sounds exorbitant to you, maybe check around to see what other people are doing, but realize if you, you have connected with the top, um, Luthier in your area, it's probably worth paying $50 more, even a hundred dollars more for that particular repair than it would be to, take it to the next best guy. So, you know, you have to sort of weigh that uh, into your mind as well. Uh, a lot of them will be up front with you and say, look, your, your, the repair that you want for that guitar is going to cost more than the guitar is worth. Uh, and they'll let you make the decision as to whether the nostalgia factor warrants you paying that amount of money. But every once in a while, you come across people who won't tell you that and they'll just they'll just bill you for it. And then you find out later, I just spent, you know, $650 getting this guitar redone. And, uh, I can, I could have bought a new one for 400. 
Um, I, I would say most people in this business are upfront about it. They don't want to do a neck reset on a Yamaha 800. They'd rather do them on, on vintage guitars that are worth it. But, um, you know, ask the questions because you can't assume that somebody's going to be upfront about that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's always good when you're, when you're um, getting ready to have some work done on your guitar to familiarize yourself with the value of that guitar. If it's something that's ready of readily available new, and you can get a new price obviously by, by Googling the guitar. If it's something out of production or vintage, uh, there are ways of finding out evaluations, uh, find out if it's worth it uh, um, before you launch into it. Because I've, I've heard stories from a lot of people like, you know, I, I dropped a ton of money into this guitar and I probably shouldn't have. Or the other way around, I dumped this guitar and I really wish that I would have spent the two, three hundred dollars that I was quoted to make it play again uh, because I missed that uh, guitar. It's a lot like owning a car, really. Um, you know, is it worth getting your valves redone? Is it worth getting, uh, you know, your uh, catalytic converter replaced in that car? Is it an old car? Is it how many miles does it have left? Um, these are all decisions that you make on other items and it's no different with uh, your musical instrument so hopefully something in there is helpful uh, as i said it's mostly common sense um, but i realize for somebody who doesn't have any uh, um, experience with guitar repair how daunting it can be to seek someone out uh, to repair their guitar so um, ask a lot of questions um, um, research people's websites um, you know, try to find out through word of mouth or testimonials uh, about the work they do. And, you know, uh, when you talk to them, uh, if they're competent, it should shine through in their demonstrations and co uh, conversations with you. Um, most, most guys I know that work on guitars are um, very patient with people. They're repeating themselves all day long, but they realize that's part of the, the business and they'll do it uh, gracefully. Every once in a while you find a grump you know, who doesn't want to explain, you know, uh, curvature of the neck one more time to someone. Um, you know, if, if really, if you, you meet an impatient person uh, in talking to them, you don't want them working on your guitar because guitar work is very, very finicky and patient work. So normally luthiers are laid back, they're cool because, you know, they have very much a lot of patience and long-suffering qualities. Every once in a while you come across one uh, uh, that might put you off and maybe you might want to move on to the next person. <laughs> anyway, hope that helps. See you on the next one.